Hi, my name is Naomi Wood and I'm in the Office of Grants and Contracts. And one of the things that I've been tasked to do is roll out a tool that we have purchased called Pivot. Pivot is a funding opportunities database that's provided by the education company ProQuest. So we have a license to use it. All you have to do is sign up with your UNT email and you have access to over 100,000 funding opportunities. Now that helps you look for grants, fellowships, scholarships, foundations, funding, and I'm going to show you that tool today. So here's the landing page of Pivot and it just gives you the brief announcements about what's going on in the research world today in regards to funding. If you'll notice at the top, there's three important tabs that you're going to use. The first one is funding, which we're already here. So you'll enter a research key term or a funding opportunity keyword to help you find funding. So I'm going to go ahead and enter something that um, is usually of interest. So let's enter transportation search. As you can see, it gives you 487 results. That's a lot to sift through. So what we like to do is to refine our search so that we can eliminate some of the opportunities that we don't want to see. This is nicely displayed. Before I refine our search results, I just want to show you, um, this is nicely displayed with the title of the grant or the fellowship, the, who the sponsor is below, what the, what the deadline is, and how much the opportunity is. On the left-hand side, you can track it you can set to active, which means it will email you updates about this opportunity. You can share it with fellow students or colleagues or even your faculty mentors. You can export these opportunities to Excel or you can curate your own list, which will show up on your home page. Additionally, if you track it, it'll show up on your, your home screen over here. But let's open one up and see what it has to say. So I like the way that they display these opportunities. At the top, it gives you the, the graduate fellowship, it gives you the website link, so you can read through the RFP or the solicitation and it'll explain every detail about the opportunity. It shows you who the sponsor is, again the amount, the applicant type, graduate students, citizenship, activity location, abstract, this is great because you can read a lot about the opportunity without having to go to the website itself to see if we're eligible. Applicants, eligibility, and here's some keywords at the bottom. Also one of the most important things that it shows you is the deadline. I've made a note at the bottom which says research office note explaining that once you find an opportunity what do you do next and who do you contact. So I have the contact information for Dr. James Duban if it's an undergraduate or if it's a nationally competitive scholarship. And you would contact Dr. Joseph O. Pong if you need writing or graduate support as far as those opportunities are concerned. Another great thing about Pivot is that it shows you the funding contact person. So you can contact directly um, the program officer or the funder and ask specific questions about this opportunity if it's not clearly stated in the website or in the RFP. Also, if you'll notice, the profile matches on the right-hand side, it tells you who you could potentially collaborate with within our institution based on the keywords. So what Pivot does is it creates an algorithm based on your keywords that you set up in your profile and other people's keywords on campus, and it gives you a match which I think is really important, especially if you want um, to work with other people on a proposal, especially with research. So it also gives you um, lots of outside institution information and people you can work with out there. So the next tab that I'm going to show you is Profiles. So this basically houses all the researcher profiles within our institution and within our system, and it's categorized by college. So for example, let's open up the College of Education and view the profiles. So 
It shows you who the person is, what their title at our institution is, what department they're in, what college. And we'll click on this first one here, and it just describes this is a lecturer at our institution, gives you a link to their CV, their personal website, what their expertise is in. So you can see, is this a good match for somebody that I would want to potentially collaborate with or gain mentorship from, and any communities or degrees that they're involved with. So I encourage everyone at our institution to create their own profile and make it as robust as possible with as many keywords as you can think of or research interests that you can think of so that it matches you with collaborators and funding opportunities. And as you can see, for this individual, they have 164 funding opportunities that are matched to them. So that makes it pretty easy to find opportunities. Papers Invited is the last tab that I'm going to show you. Before I go back to the funding tab and show you how to refine your results, but this is a list of calls for papers and scholarly journals and conferences that you can attend and present your research at. It's organized by discipline. So let's just click on one of these and see what it, what it has to show you. So as you can see, it lists it very much in the same way. The title of the conference, who's the sponsor of the conference, and the organizers. The deadline for manuscript, manuscript submissions as well. Let's click on it and see what it has to show us. So it tells you the conference name, who the organizers are, what language it's in. It's very important um, for you to speak the language of the conference you're going to. Um, who is eligible for this conference? Research scholars and students. Where's the conference location? And all the dates for the manuscript and abstract deadlines before the conference. So this is important if you want to present your research at a conference. And the website link at the bottom. Let's go back. And as you can see, there's lots of different conferences that you can attend in your field of study. Let's go back to funding. I just want to briefly show you the advanced search tab. So this is so you can narrow your results as much as possible and you don't see things that you don't want to see. So let's enter a new keyword and let's go down to exclude opportunities matching. Let's say you're a graduate student, student looking for autism research funding. And I would encourage all of you to, on the applicant type, to state that you are a graduate student. That way it filters out results for other applicants. You can even exclude opportunities down at the bottom. Um, you can exclude, let's see, let's say you want to see only research. You don't want to see any of these other opportunities. Maybe you want to keep dissertation in there because that you would be working on that as well. And this is just an example of how to eliminate opportunities and get more strategic funding that is more related to your focus. So let's just say we want to get rid of all that stuff. We want to say we're a graduate student. Let's see what that does. Gives us two results. So as you can see, this is a great way to really see what's out there for you in research. You can expand it as much as you want. You can narrow it as much as you want. Um, it's a great tool to use, and I encourage all of you to sign up. You sign up with your UNT email, and you can get started as soon as you're on campus. It's accessible um, no matter where you are, um, as long as you log in to pivot.cos.com with your UNT email, you have access to a world of funding opportunities. And feel free to reach out to my office if you have any questions about this tool or you need help navigating funding opportunities in general.